Today is Monday, November 27, 2017. <coughs> I'd like to call this meeting to order. We're here for the purpose of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, it is 8.20, and I ask that you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Clerk Spencer, I'd ask you to call the roll. Right. <laughs> Mulliner. Here. Brennan. Here. Sabatino. Absent. Deuter. Here. Dunn. Here. Leader. Here. Kolumsky. Here. Graham. Here. Saluto. Here. York. Here. Levin. Here. Park. Here. Conquest. Here. Kennedy. Here. 13 present, <clears throat> 1 absent. 13 present, one absent. We have a quorum. We are in session. Any announcements? Seeing none, we'll move on. Clerk Spencer, public comment. Do we have anybody signed up for public comment? Mayor, we do not have anyone <coughs> that signed up for public comment. Anybody in the audience who did not have an opportunity to sign up for public comment but wishes to address the council at this time? <laughs> Mr. Cobb? <laughs> Mayor, there's no one there. <laughs> Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, business before the council, review of fiscal year budget 2018. City Manager, are you ready to go? Yes, we are. Fantastic. Let's go. We've got about uh, five items to cover before we jump into circle back. Thank you. Uh, where we left off was the stormwater fund, page 262. I will turn it over to uh, Director Killian uh, to highlight a couple of items, and then we'll ha we're happy to answer questions. Thank you. Um, in the uh, stormwater fund, well, uh, just a quick look at back at 2017, we did finish um, six projects this year. Um, the Madison, Washington, Pine and Avon, Crescent, Cambridge, Harrison, and York in 290. Uh, so that includes our total over the last two years to nine of our basins and areas um, that we've completed. Um, looking forward into uh, 2018, we again have 500,000 set aside for possible property or land acquisition. Um, in next year's budget. Some of the major projects we'll be working on um, that are found back in the KEBS, um, if you look on KEB page 91, um, it's the Southwest Infrastructure Improvements. And what we've done is uh, we've kind of changed that around a little bit. Um, phase one is the Messiah Project, or Brian, which keeps rotating, so we kind of call it the Southwest Infrastructure Phase One. Phase two that we'll also be looking at next year is the, uh, basically the Christ United or the Jackson property um, that we're looking at with there. And then phase three, um, which we'll be looking forward is we have some continued engineering dollars for looking at with the, uh, working with DuPage County on stormwater modeling um, and some preliminary engineering on the Sailor Swain Vallette area. So we're starting to, to look at that area. Um, if we can come to agreement, um, with uh, possibly the school districts, park districts, or other property owners. We also have money to begin some of the design work for co the college use stormwater improvements. Um, and then uh, again, continuing strictly with flood proofing um, policies and some of the other commercial multifamily. One thing that we don't have in here um, that some of the uh, fourth board aldermen have asked us for is um, now that we're done with the Pine um, Avon, um, stormwater improvement project, one of the items that we haven't covered with the neighbors yet is some sort of amenity in there, whether it be passive or um, uh, recreational in that area. And we don't have a cab prepared for that, mainly because we really don't know. Um, it, the basin was just completed in the fall. We haven't done our survey with the neighbors yet. So we really don't know what level of improvement, if needed, would be required out there. Um, so it's hard for staff to prepare any budget, whether it be 5,000 or 200,000, what may go into that. So that's something throughout the year we'll be bringing back to the Public Works Committee and then the Council for review and approval on that. Okay. If I can add to something that uh, Director Killian said, um, and that's regarding the schools and uh, Park District. 
We do have two areas left where we're trying to work with School District 205, and that is the College View area, which is York High School. And uh, we've had some conversations with them in the City Park School group that has recently come back together. And uh, uh, Superintendent Moyer contacted me recently that he has been given direction by the school board on some uh, provisions for Jackson School, which is next to the Christ United Methodist property that we just purchased. Uh, we hope that there might be an opportunity to gain uh, a couple few uh, acre feet of storage on that property. And so it's my, I, I just set a meeting with uh, Dr. Moyer for this week so that we can um, have that discussion. Okay, anything else from staff on uh, stormwater? Any questions? I have a question. Page 264, uh, line item 01-00, the property acquisition fund, I don't know what you call it, right? 264, Howard, you mentioned it in your speech, we had 500,000 added to it. Correct. What's the balance right now? Because right now it says uh, 217 budget and estimated at 1.6. Um, I know that we recently made a purchase for, for rounding sake, let's just call it $300,000. Uh, am I to understand that 1.3 will carry over and we're gonna add 500 to that? So we'll have 1.8 million available for buyouts? Uh, That's correct. Okay. okay. Any other stormwater questions? Okay, so then we'll move on. Okay, next is the uh, Capital Improvement Fund, uh, page 168. Obviously, we, we talk about a lot of, we kind of jump back and forth to the uh, Capital Improvement Fund, the CAB, um, as far as uh, the different departments go. So again, I'll turn it over to Director Killian for any comments, and then we're happy to answer any questions. I think uh, individually we went through most of them with the individual accountant items, so if there's, we'll entertain any questions <coughs> on any particular one if the council has. Any questions on the Capital Improvement Fund? Okay, let's move on. Thank you, uh, page 266, bond and interest. I'm gonna turn that over to um, Director Trozine for comments. So this section includes two funds. Uh, the first fund uh, is listed, starts on page 267. This is our debt service for our general obligation bonds. It's really the, the fund that we make all of the bond payments out of. And you'll see uh, transfers in, uh, mostly from the <coughs> uh, capital improvement fund, the TIF fund, redevelopment fund, and the stormwater fund that's on page 268 where you'll see those transfers and the expenditures are on 269 those are all of our general obligation bonds again for those funds we allocate the uh, debt for the muf and the parking directly to those funds say that last part again mr trozine uh, so these are just the general uh, TIF and, and stormwater funds, so any debt that we've allocated to the MUF, the utility fund, and the parking fund, those are the enterprise funds, we record that debt directly in those funds. Where's the debt for the uh, new parking deck? Is that, that here or is that in the... So that debt is actually recorded in the parking fund, um, but then we do have transfers in, um, and again, that's where we've budgeted either a capital improvement fund in prior years, and then in 18 and 19, the use of uh, TIF funds for those that, that service for the Addison Deck. Okay. Any questions? The second fund is the 
uh, bond and interest 2006, the revenue fund. Uh, that's the bond that we issued regarding the Route 83 development, and that is funded totally by that developer. Uh, they submit all the payments for the annual debt service. We hold those funds until due uh, and then make the payments. And I think, believe there's about six years left on that bond. Any questions? Alderman Levin. Are these kinds of bonds through, that we used here, are they still available for uh, development or are these Kind of going by wayside now. I believe we could still do this the way the way this uh, we issued this bond. That answer your question. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to go back to my previous question, Mr. Trozine. Um, we're talking about making a debt service payment with TIF dollars and TIF one on the parking deck. Correct. Um, there seemed to be a little confusion at the JRB held in this room a couple hours ago. <coughs> My understanding that uh, in the agreement we had with District 205 where we released properties, there was going to be a make whole calculation and we would not consider <coughs> surpluses until that we had reached that make whole. Is it correct to state that the debt service payment that is being paid with TIF one dollars on the parking garage is part of our make whole calculation and we have not hit our make whole threshold yet? That's correct. We, we actually, uh, I think everybody understands uh, when we were providing that make whole schedule and those projections, they were inaccurate by one year due to the TIF statutes that allow for property taxes collected um, for the 24th year, actually collected in the 25th year. So all of, we revised those make whole schedules, pushing them further ahead, allowing additional funds available in the TIF that we then allocated to those two debt service payments. We, we have not projected anything higher than that, but again, that's all within the make whole agreement that those two debt service payments. Well, another way to state that would be that the properties were leased because there's an additional year calculated created a larger make whole amount that was owed to the city. Correct. And we are just following that Correct. schedule and, that we set up. And using those additional funds to... I think that's an important point to, to make. I just want to make sure that uh, all were clear on that. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, what's next? Uh, next we have the trust and agency funds. And uh, to start with that, we have the uh, public safety pensions in there, firefighters and police officers. I know finance committees had uh, a conversation regarding those and where to set the levels. Um, so we're happy to answer any questions that uh, council may have about that. Any questions? Okay. Next is the Gloss Mausoleum Fund. This is uh, a unique and Elmhurst. What page unique, are you that on? I'm sorry, it's page 281. 281. This is a, a unique Elmhurst fund. Um, not seen a Gloss Mausoleum Fund in any of their municipal budgets. Uh, but this is a situation with the, where the Gloss Mausoleum uh, property was uh, deeded to the city and that we would. Uh, uh, take care of that uh, along with some funds. The park district manages the property around it by an agreement with the city. Um, and then this is the fund that uh, would, would, be, would be used for any repairs <coughs> to the mausoleum. Do we uh, pay the park district to do that? I don't think so. We, do we actually contracted out, they I believe, it. I'm asking if we pay for them to maintain it. Oh, I'll pay. He does not. <laughs> we do not. Okay. And then on page 285, uh, last item in this category is the working cash fund. Uh, that is a, a fund that we uh, have tried to keep at uh, fund at the million dollar level to uh, help us throughout the year uh, as needed. 
And i um, happy to say that we're back at that million dollars. Some aldermen will recall um, when budgets were tight, we took that down significantly and we were able to bring that back up and sustain it since then. Any other comments or questions? I think we got it down to $23,000 at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Worked real hard to get it down there. <laughs> okay, I can take that anything else? Uh, nothing in that group. <coughs> Is that it? That's it. Okay, before we move on to circle back, any other questions that I'm missing from anybody? Okay. City Manager, I know that uh, Mr. Trozin issued a uh, memorandum on the 21st uh, addressing the circle backs that were noted. The uh, floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, we can take these one by one. I think uh, we've provided information uh, specifically to any of the issues. So, um, as far as number one goes, the Explore Elmhurst, uh, as Alderman Polumsky pointed out to us, we, we went back and looked for the receipts on that. We partnered with the Chamber of Commerce to um, to do the, uh, to purchase the advertising, solicit and purchase the advertising for the trolley. And so that, that was booked um, incorrectly in a miscellaneous charge, and so we've changed that. Sorry. So what's the net effect? Sorry. Go ahead. What's the net effect of the change then? Do we have more revenue, less revenue? $3,000. I think we're in the whole $3,600. The estimated for 17, it's accounted for, but we would actually, part of the carryovers, we would add $3,600 as a revenue line item for that account. So it would be a 3600 in 18. So plus 3600 Correct. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, circle back two. Uh, number two, there was a question Alderman Bram had about regarding the detail for part-time wages. Um, in, in particular, I think it was the communications intern, um, but uh, we provided the breakdown of that entire account. Satisfied, Alderman Bram? On that no one? further questions. All right. Legal department. Legal department. Uh, question about uh, um, all the legal fees. I think when we were at the table discussing this, uh, we had commented that there were legal fees out of the TIF funds, and so we provided breakdown of the uh, expenditures from TIF funds for legal fees. Okay, any questions? Alderman Bram. Thank you, and thank you for the information. So my understanding, just to make sure I'm clear, and I'm not sure about one of the figures that's listed in the paragraph, um, it mentions three figures being paid out for legal, 821,757, 724,962, and 96,795. My understanding is, and it's on page 156, that the 724,962 is the total amount out of account 110-0081 on page 156. My thought is that the 96,795 is TIF, but I'm not sure where the other number comes from if my comment about 96,000 is accurate. <coughs> it's a total number? Is that what you're asking? Well, there's three numbers listed. Yeah, I the first one's the total, and I, they kind of put them in reverse. Oh, they just totaled them? It, it they put them in reverse. So it's a total, then the breakout's what follows. Ah. No further questions. <laughs> All right. Visitors and tourism. Uh, the question from visitors and tourism was regarding the uh, amount that was uh, paid for holiday decorations and how those were broken out with the business districts. Um, so we did that for 2015 and to the 18 and 19 projected budgets. I would note the, that the commentary continues on the second page where uh, Assistant Manager Kopp 
um, corrected the amount, uh, which was uh, 42 and should have been 24 for the 2018 budget. 42,000 and 24,000, excuse me. And there was a second item uh, regarding visitor and tourism, and that was line 6098. That's page 165, sorry. Uh, line item 6098, which is the $50,000 uh, line item, and how that breaks down with the American Legion and the uh, uh, city center um, physical services. Uh. Alderman Bram, any questions on the uh, lighting for a city center in Spring Road? Um, I, I guess my only question is what I've said before and in regards to the city participating in that, which was uh, solely done by city center in the past years. I'm glad to see it going down from 42 to 24,000 and um, it looks like we're heading in the right direction, so no further questions. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. So the 6098 for 18 has $105,000 in the budget. Correct. Um, and I had it marked as 75 for the city center and 30 for American Legion. That's correct. Uh, okay. Okay, any other questions on uh, either one of those items? Just a follow up Coming to done. that. Uh, the $30,000 for the American Legion for, for this coming year, 2018, we had the Legion in last month and they indicated they were not seeking another grant for 2018. So I'm just wondering um, wh why that appeared. Was it, an, was it an accident to leave it in or how did that get in there? City manager? Um, I received a uh, request emailed to me by the commander of the post requesting the 30,000 uh, specifically for the uh, Thanksgiving Day uh, Feed the Troops event and for the military ball. Uh, it's my understanding that would go back through PA and S committee uh, for discussion. And uh, I'm sure there will be further, further thoughts on that. Okay. okay. Any other questions? All right, let's move on. Uh, point number five was the interfund transfer uh, from general fund, <clears throat> excuse me, to the stormwater fund. Uh, I think it's uh, primarily what you asked a few minutes ago, Mayor. Um, the transfer uh, specifically in 2016 was for the purchase of three properties on Washington Street. Okay, any questions on that? Alderman Bram. Thank you, and I, I, I believe I discussed this last week on this uh, circle bag. I guess this is an opportunity to at least see if there's any um, will for further discussion. Um, knowing that the carryover is going to be approximately 1.3 million from that 1.6 million, um, and this is for uh, buyouts, correct? Correct. Um, and it seems like year to year, our policy has been for $1 million um, for this line item. I'm just wondering on uh, if there's any need to budget anything in 2018 because we're gonna be carrying over 1.3 million, which is $300,000 over what we budgeted for this policy in previous years. Um, I would like to hear other Council's uh, thoughts on that, if, if they will, but um, my feeling is that we're already carrying over more than what we've said policy-wise on this, so that we should not budget $500,000 uh, for the 2018 budget. Or Mulliner. I think we need to budget the amount that has been recommended because we have a number of projects that are still outstanding and potential buyouts that are out there that are 
large volume buyouts, and I think that there's some that we just need to be prepared for. So I think we're better off by having the additional budget there. If it's not needed, it's not needed, but at least the budget's there to be able to spend it. I think we've got enough projects that will easily, uh, if we are able to purchase the properties, spend that money. Alderman Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. I agree with Alderman Mulliner. I think whether it's for you know a, a project specific buyout or um, to alleviate the flooding of a particular area, I think it's good to have that there. And I, I believe we'll spend it for um, I believe we'll spend it. Okay. Any additional comments, Alderman Bram? Thank you, and um, thank you for both Alderman for providing your insight on the issue. Um, just past history, you know, this hasn't been around for very long. We spent close to 900,000 in 2016. Um, we're only spending 300,000 proposed this year, or I shouldn't say we proposed because it's happened or about to happen. Um, so both years combined, we barely spent over $1.1 million. <coughs> Once again, I refer to a policy that we as a council agreed upon of 1 million. Um, so we're talking about looking at past history, never spending up to our policy amount of $1 million, barely spending that amount over two years, but allocating w the carryover of 1.3 and an additional $500,000 for properties that at least from my insight on the Public Works Committee, um, we don't seem to have the ability at least from what I know sitting here today to be able to acquire um, multiple properties that would come anywhere close to $1.8 million. Um, so I understand it's just a budget item. I get that, but I refer back to our own policy. I refer back also to our history on this line item. A history in the two years that it's been in existence does not show us ever reaching a million dollars. Um, Mr. Mayor, from a procedural perspective, do you take motions at this point? Absolutely, if you wanna make an adjustment, I think it's an appropriate time to make a motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to remove line item 9839 on page 167 of $500,000 for the fiscal budget of 2018. Okay, so uh, a motion to take that number down to zero, from 500 to zero, um, with the understanding that there's a carryover of roughly 1.3. Correct. Good summation. Okay, do I have a second for that motion? Alderman Bram, I don't think we have a second. I tried, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, any discussion on stormwater? Okay. Um, it's Committee of the Whole, so I'm going to opine um, before we move on. This is a tough one because um, I see both sides of it. Uh, kind of the way I look at it would be this council has been very aggressive in their stormwater management, in my opinion. Um, if we reduced it 500,000 and um, I think we said the, the total will be about 1.8 with the carryover. If we reduced it 500,000 it was 1.3, I believe that if this council was presented with an opportunity for buyouts that totaled even $2 million, and it made sense, we'd probably do it. So um, I can see there's, there's, there's merits to both. Um, this is just, I guess, conservative planning, and I don't think that's the worst thing, but like I said, um, especially when it comes to stormwater, it's kind of one of those things when an opportunity presents itself, so. All right, city manager, what's next? Thank you. Um, next is p uh, public benefits, page 152. However, I would direct you to uh, KEB page 49. That's the specific project that uh, was, was asked about. And that's the Prairie Path at York Street. Uh, Sorry, what was that? <coughs> oh, the underpass, okay. Page 49 on the KEB. Uh, that, this is a project that has been um, before us many years, as Alderman Bram pointed out. And the way that it came before us was uh, some grant funding through DuPage Mayor and Managers Conference uh, for a good portion of a potential project. Uh, where it's stalled is whether or not we do the phase one, uh, which is estimated at $150,000, uh, to try and proceed for more grant funds. Uh, 
uh, as we've had this conversation, um, the uh, Public Affairs and Safety Committee um, asked for some alternatives uh, to, actually, I'm sorry, Public Works Committee actually asked for some alternatives, uh, but the Public Affairs and Safety Committee had been talking about the issue uh, previously. So we had an engineering study done of some alternatives um, that uh, is waiting to be discussed at PANS. Um, we had to have some conversations with the county because they own the trail. We had to have some conversations with the park district because they maintain the trail and they own property on the north side of the trail. Uh, so I know that the city engineer has had those conversations and is plans to come back to the Public Affairs and Safety Committee with those um, thoughts. And uh, what we did um, for the circle back was to basically highlight that um, along with yours uh, as possible project. Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Mr. Levin. I think from, uh, I'll, I think I can speak for the committee, one of the things that was brought to our attention was, and I don't know if I have the data here, but there was a significant number of accidents um, at that crossing that were recent, which caused the Public Affairs and Safety Committee to look back and say, well, the signal, we think, right? yeah. the new pedestrian. Well, we talked about a couple different things, but I think because of the accidents that had occurred in the last two years or maybe three years, there, were, uh, there was a significant bump that we decided we would look at it again. Um, and we also asked the question of, uh, I don't know if city manager was there, uh, I think we learn from our question that if we don't do something relatively soon, the grant funds will may move on to another project. What is the uh, <coughs> expiration of the our rights to that funding? We are checking with uh, the transportation people at DuPage Mayor Managers so that we have a, a more hard date. They've just said as long as you're making progress on it, we'll kind of let it ride. Uh, however, with the changes at CMAP recently, um, that uh, that has spurred us to ask further. We don't have an answer for you tonight. We're just getting in touch with uh, Mark this week. Okay. Alderman Bram. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my understanding was the Route 83 proposed overpass was going to utilize this funding um, instead of um, the York Prairie Path underpass. Um, I, I know the PANS committee did not have an opportunity tonight to, at least I don't think so, to discuss this. Um, I know it was on their agenda this evening. Um, I did look at the material. Uh, there are obviously pros and cons for anything that we do, including an over or underpass, in this case an underpass. Um, I think that the alternatives that were proposed, and I don't want to dive too deep into what's pending on a committee, um, are obviously significantly cheaper. And um, we've already done some improvements by cutting back trees and bushes to have a better line of sight in this area. And since then, and I guess um, anybody in the room could correct me, since then I have not heard um, any status update in the negative context <coughs> where um, there have been either close calls or accidents. So hopefully that has helped. Hopefully education um, in regards to looking both ways before you enter a crosswalk also helps. Um, I, I feel that we have gave this uh, justified thought over the last number of years, I don't know, four or five years. Um, it's a significant dollar amount, grant funding or not. We can apply for grant funding uh, for other areas. Um, I feel that this um, is past its time. We have some opportunity um, and some proposals that the PANS PA committee is going to look at shortly um, that are cheaper and I think would say serve the same purpose. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to. Mr. Bram, before you make that motion, can I ask to get a little more information out of the staff that might help or, you know, at least relevant to your motion? Sure. Uh, City Manager, are we talking about uh, page 152, 8025, the 415,000? Is that right? Okay. Yes. How much of that 
question, question and maybe a clarification. How much of the 415 that's projected is covered by the grant? Would be covered by the grant? Zero. Zero. <coughs> so it's just, is that just for engineering? That is for the two bike path projects, that would be phase one dollars, which the grant does not cover. And so what that is, it's a preliminary engineering study to look at routing and property and those type of things. Um, I, I'll compare it to the metro station. When we applied for the CMAC dollars, we paid for the phase one. Right. Uh, which then allowed us to go for the grant funding. And is, sorry to cut you off, is this only for, I know Alderman Bram talked a little bit about 83, is this only for dollars allocated for the prairie path? Did I miss it? We have, we have funds uh, dedicated for both the Prairie Path and for the Route 83 Phase 1s. But not in, but in this line item or in? in? In that line item. Okay, so how much of the 415 is for the Prairie Path? 150000 Okay. Is for the Prairie Path. We have the Phase 1 for Route 83, because it's a little more complicated, is estimated at 180000 We've budgeted ninety. And we were hoping to go to the county and the forest preserve to see if they would split the cost. We've had some preliminary conversations with them, see if they would split the cost of the phase one so that we can then proceed for grant dollars. And does any of the 83 qualify for TIF funding? I, don't, I think it's too far removed from uh, TIF 3. Is it or across, isn't it across the street? Or are we talking about? Um, no, it's south of Lake Street. Yeah, it's it's it would what what we are envisioning is there's some uh, forest preserve property. Oh, I'm south sorry. Of okay, I was thinking across from Kmart, but this is up north. Yeah, yeah this is this is another um, overpass, and and if I can ask a question of Alderman Bram, when you say you th thought the funds were being used for the Route 83 bridge, were you talking about the Phase One dollars budgeted or the grant funds? Grant funds. We are not unfortunately we're not allowed to just transfer funds from one project to another. We actually have to go back through, if, let's say that we decide we don't want to do the Prairie Path project and we tell DuPage Mayor Managers we're not going to use the funds, that gets returned to them to, for the STP program. We would have to reapply with our project to, try, to get the grant funds for um, the Route 83. Okay, path. thanks for the clarification. I remember discussing in the Public Works Committee um, it was my understanding, at least at that time, that if we didn't move forward, and at that time the committee um, at that point was not wanting to move forward with this project, and it was discussed to maybe, maybe what was meant was to reapply for those same dollars for the 83, but those two were mentioned in, in conjunction. So thank you for the clarification on the grant dollars. And, the and one last thing, Alderman Bram, before you make your motion, the the way this fund works at DuPage Mayors and Managers is you just don't reapply and your standards are the same. You're going up against projects from every, so every year everyone said, like we just got out of this fund, we got a chunk of money for the um, Metro, the 2.4 out of Metro, right? Correct. Um, but it, you're really up against the strength of other applicants, not necessarily just because you qualified last time. So, all right, that's enough. Uh, I covered what I wanted to. Uh, Cover. Alderman Bram, uh, the floor was yours. You were going to make a motion. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to, I don't know how you want me to word it, but remove $150,000 from line item 80-25 uh, for the projected fiscal year of 2018. Um, I think it's a fair motion. I think I, I, to, to clarify the, the purpose is uh, removing the 150,000 in that line item that's allocated for the prairie path. That is correct. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion to uh, reduce line item 8025 on page 152 by 150,000, uh, which is the estimated amount uh, for a continued phase two, is it? Phase one. Phase one, engineering on the underpass. Do I have a second? for two, Alderman Bram. Question? Yes, sir. Um, it totally escaped me what my question was, literally in seconds. Was it about this one, about this line item? Yeah, oh, now I got it. Um, so what's allocated here is from a GO bond. So what bond is this coming from? Uh, 
Uh, that's correct. The way we envision that is a uh, general obligation bond funded by general fund. So, I mean, is it a current bond that we've already issued, or you're saying to issue another general obligation bond for this? <coughs> it would be a general obligation bond for a number of capital projects. Do we have an understanding of other than these two engineering on what those are and the dollar, proposed dollar amount? So it's more than the 415, I assume. I'm guessing it's yes. million. Correct. We'd, we're anticipating po uh, possibly another $10 million bond issue in 2018. Um, we just finished up the stormwater fund uh, discussed in that two projects, the College View project and the Southwest uh, project that do not have funding uh, right now. So I think that was a total of $5 million. So it would be a, a mix of funding projects. Thank you. Any other questions on uh, circle back six? <coughs> hey, circle back seven. Thank you. This was a question about how much fund balance to carry in the MFT fund. Um, so uh, roughly right now there's 580,000 in there. Uh, we suggested that it could be something less than that. Um, as I think everybody knows, we have great concern over what the state may or may not do and whether they will or will not fund things like this, which explains why we've kept it where we have. Uh, however, that's a policy decision of the council and we'll open it up for uh, questions or discussion. So the all right, uh, Alderman York, you had this as a circle back. Um, yeah, so I uh, thank you. Um, I've talked to the city staff about this and I, I still, um, I understand the concern about the state of Illinois on every level. Um, it doesn't just pertain to this fund or anything like that. I understand that. Um, so I think we could, you know, certainly bring it to committee. It might go to our, to the finance committee, but um, I think, uh, you know, if we look at like 25%, our, our average annual spend or the budgeted spend is $1.2 million roughly. 25% um, of that number is about $300,000. I think there's you know room for additional expenses. I don't think to be taken out of the general fund and moved into the motor uh, motor fuel tax fund. Um, I'm not saying we have to you know do it all in, in one fell swoop, but I'd certainly be interested in trying to move a couple hundred thousand dollars and leave uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So um, I guess I'd like to make a motion to move. $200,000 of fund balance, um, move some $200,000 of qualified motor fuel tax expenses from the general fund to the motor fuel tax fund. All right, I'm going to ask you to say that, that again. Please say that again, Alderman New York. You want to move money move. out of the motor fuel tax? No, move expenses out of the general fund that ah, qualify qualified expenses for the motor fuel tax fund, thereby reducing the fund balance. I understand. Okay. So city manager, do you understand what he's saying? Yes, I do. Okay. So right now we've got a fund balance projected at 2018 of 552,000. That's what this is showing. And you're asking staff to basically Reduce the amount of that fund balance by two hundred thousand by paying. Qualified expenses. Well, there's certainly qualified expenses that would qualify. I'm assuming yes. Right. So you're asking staff to allocate uh, <coughs> payments two hundred thousand dollars in payments out of motor fuel that normally would come out of, come out of our general fund. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So is. Trying to figure out the clearest way to make a motion. If, if I can attempt, I think another way to look at it is adding 200,000 of revenue from MFT into the general fund. I don't know if you can do that though. I mean, a fund it, it, Qualified spending makes more sense uh, than I'm moving sorry. it. Right, yeah. right, I'm sorry. Nice yeah. try, I'm city sorry. manager. That would certainly be easier, but I don't think we can. Yeah, I. All right. 200,000 of general fund expenditures into MFT. Yes. 
Okay, so the motion would be to um, pay for two hundred thousand dollars of additional qualifying motor fuel tax expenditures that we would pay for. In, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, <coughs> that we would pay for out of the general fund, but we want to pay for them out of motor fuel. Yes. It's an awkward motion. Does everyone understand it? I don't, does anybody not understand it? Okay. Great. So we have a motion um, to um, spend an additional two hundred thousand dollars out of the motor fuel tax fund that uh, on qualified expenses that are currently paid out of the general fund. Do we have a second? Alderman Kennedy with a second. Discussion. Alderman Deuter. Thank you, Mayor. I'm, I'm wondering. I'm thinking about the purpose of this. Would this be to just increase our fund balance in the general fund, or would this have some impact on the levy? Do you envision this having some impact on the levy? I, Alderman York. Um, it, it's going to have an effect this year for sure of of exactly what you just said. But it's in effect, it's just bringing the fund balance that's that's historically in this fund down to. Um, a compromise level between what city staff desires it to be <coughs> and using general fund dollar or um, saving general fund dollars that could be easily put into this category. So it, it relieves the general fund of expenses while not um, uh, impairing the, the balance in this fund to a great extent, which is the concern of city staff. Let me ask a question. Uh, as Solomon York pointed out, obviously we have. Uh, we have a uh, balanced target um, for our general fund. Do we have that same guidelines for this, or is we've not adhered to that as much. We've we've been a little higher with MFT in our fund balance than than our general fund projection. Just been an unwritten policy that we followed. Yes. Okay. And to answer Alderman Doyle's question, Alderman York, basically, yes, there will be a benefit, but it sounds to me like. With this motion, you would reduce it, but you'd like to see it that way. I I think this is a this is a good compromise to take some dollars that are just sitting there, not doing anything, and have them be productive to the taxpayer, and then we can get this to whatever committee needs to look at it to establish I um, a fund balance going forward, a, okay. a similar fund balance policy like we have for the general fund, for the working cash fund, and for a bunch of other funds. Okay. Alderman Molliner. Actually, Alderman York just said what I think we should do. I think instead of having a motion to move this at this moment, I think it would be better off to take this to the Finance Committee and have them go through a discussion and set a policy to set the fund balance level so that it's a formal policy <coughs> so that we have a better understanding and we have a chance to look at it a little closer. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about just changing fund balances kind of at a meeting like this. I'd rather have some homework done by the whole finance committee to come back and say, hey, this is what we need to do and this is where we think our qualified fund balances or qualified expenditures so we have a better handle on that. Okay. Additional comments or questions? Alderman Levin, then I'll go to Alderman Bram. Uh, so you are talking about the balance on 195, correct? Um, on 195, on yeah. Yeah, on page 195. All right. Um, the concern that I would add, or the question I want to ask staff is it seems like uh, the, if, even if the fund balance is higher, it looks like it's been declining since 2015 and projected to 2019 where it's going to go down um, over $150,000. Is there uh, something happening <coughs> that uh, you know, it's not going up and down, it's going down? <coughs> Or are you just allocating more expenses to this as we? Uh, as proposed, as projected, um, the motor fuel tax revenues are fairly flat and consistent. Um, our current practice is that we do allocate salaries uh, to the MFT. And so those are going up by the percentage by the contracts. And so those <coughs> are the projected uh, Use of fund balance, as as you noted, we would consider we would 
more than likely is based on the state it's, it has been a flat revenue source that that would continue all right um, I, I think I like Alderman Moliner's approach um, I think I trust the chair of the Finance Committee to look carefully at this and um, that's the way I would prefer to do it any other comments Alderman Bram thank you I just want to say I, I agree with Alderman Moliner I, I, I think that albeit a good idea um, I'm not sure where the two hundred thousand dollars comes from I'm not sure were you just waving at Tom I was waving a fly off oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry after I did it I thought man I wonder how that looked I thought, I thought you were hitting him on the side of the head there um, was uh, uh, I, I think going and having a deeper look at this within the Finance Committee and then bringing it to the full City Council would give it a it's due diligence and due time for all of us to kind of have an understanding of what should be the qualified expenses um, maybe it's more than just salaries like I, I think Alderman York is is hinting at without saying it so maybe maybe that is appropriate but um, I caution moving forward at this time I think uh, creating a policy based on this would be the the right step any other comments Alderman Deuter thank you mayor I do agree that having a close look and setting a policy and committee makes sense I think the only time to look at it now would be if it does have the potential to change the levy um, that that the I know the Finance Committee has been looking at so that I think that's the timing issue if it won't have an effect on the on the levy um, then I would not be inclined to change it now okay well, let me ask a, a question Alderman Levin so Alderman York are you, are you is that your goal is to look at impacts on the the tax levy and looking at ways to sort of uh, minimize that effect let me let me let me try to jump in here I don't want to put all of York in a box let me let me one of the biggest considerations that that um, council is being asked to consider when it comes to the tax levy is that magic chart we have where the black lines kind of going through and that black line and that blue line that blue path that's our fund balance so any savings or any money that we can leave in the general fund does affect that how it affects the council's opinion on the tax levy I think is up to the individual person but uh, it's, it's a direct effect to the general fund and if you're using a general fund as your measure of how to whether or not to increase your tax levy that's part of your consideration does that make sense Alderman York thank you your honor so yeah that, that's a, a great uh, a great explanation I think the reasoning for what I chose the 200 was um, our range in the general fund is 25 to 33 percent so 25 uh, percent fund balance of the five of of the spend of 1.2 million dollars approximately is about three hundred thousand dollars the 33 percent number is three hundred and ninety five thousand if we made the two hundred thousand dollar adjustment that would leave a fund balance of 352 which kind of puts it right there in between all the other numbers and it takes an asset of the city that's relatively underutilized to this point in time and I certainly appreciate and understand the caution by city staff but we're in, by no means in my opinion all things that we know today um, cutting off our nose to sp spite our face f with this particular move I'm fine if, if we want to bring it back and take a good look at it but it's two hundred thousand dollars just sitting there not doing anything so that's the reason I'm making the motion okay additional comments or questions all I'm done <clears throat> just to clarify so I assume there's a bucket of expenses that we could shift over there far in excess of two hundred thousand uh, to just cover that and I think the intent was just for one year for, for this is what I gather from the motion further out just clarifying okay that's what that's what I've heard so far <clears throat> any other comments or questions I, I have a question Alderman Polomsky. just uh, historically um, for these expenses that are eligible yet were not um, covered from this account why why would some expenses still be in the general fund is it just something that's revisited every so often the eligibility 
I don't believe we have enough MFT revenue to cover all the eligible expenses. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That's correct. <laughs> Any other comments? Okay. I'm going to ask Clerk Spencer to call on the vote and uh, just to clarify um, what you're voting for. The motion basically is to reduce this fund balance by $200,000 and use that those funds to pay for qualifying funds that would have been paid for out of the general fund. So the end result would be a lower fund balance in the motor fuel tax uh, area, right? We can repeat so, it in a higher fund balance. On and, and a higher fund balance in the general fund. Uh, that's if you vote, that's if the motion passes. Clerk Spencer. Moliner. No. Brennan. Aye. Sabatino, absent. Joyder. No. Dunn? No. Leader? Aye. Polumsky? No. Graham? No. Toledo? No. York? Aye. Levin? No. Park? Aye. Honquist? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Six eyes. Seven nays and one absent. Six eyes, seven nays, motion fails. Uh, continue. Point of order? Yes. Is it the rule of seven or, no. or do you need a supermajority? Two questions. Don't need a, it, it's committee. I don't, you don't need a supermajority. And it's, it's not committee. And it's also not the rule of seven. And it's not the rule of seven. Because it's not the, per it, either it wasn't on the positive side. It has to be on the positive side for the rule of seven to play. So seven, six, not six, seven. Right. Yeah, my vote only makes it a worse tie. Right. <laughs> if I voted that way. If you voted that way. And we'll explain it to the new aldermen later in their second year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, any additional discussion on uh, circle back number seven? <laughs> Alderman Bram. Not in regards to what's on the circle back, in light of um, what happened today um, with the police activity, and, and I want to give kudos publicly to the police department for, for acting so quickly, um, but it is relevant to the budget as well. Um, I was getting there. I just um, a lot of puzzled looks around the dais. Um, we talked, or I, I asked the questions in regards to the license plate readers before, and, and the chief, I know he's not here this evening, um, but made mention of a two-year plan. The reason why I bring this up is, you know, upon the, not even today's recent police activity, but there seems to be um, relatively more police activity than we would like to see. Um, <coughs> would it be beneficial of accelerating that plan and doing it this upcoming fiscal year? And I know I'm kind of putting you in a spot, city manager, since the chief is not here, um, but is that something that should be considered? And if so, I would like to obviously make a motion to amend. Well, let's let's um, identify where it is in the budget, how much it is. It's probably motor fuel qualified, Alderman Bram. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I know, about that. <laughs> I know the police um, is on 129 <laughs> to 131. I don't know exactly what line item. <laughs> I believe that's page 130, police budget. Is it miscellaneous equipment? In, yeah, line 8098. Um, I appreciate your comments about the police department, and I certainly share them uh, with, with today's um, arrests that were made. Um, and I understand what, what you're saying with increased police activity, it seems, and we've had um, some, some good occasions to use. We've, we've had some um, good fortune in using these to apprehend the, uh, uh, the perpetrators. Um, let me talk with um, Chief Ruth about that, and only because I think it might be a timing issue and what we can accomplish okay. um, over that next year. I think that's, that's always the way Chief has looked at it. You know, first it was to evaluate it, and then it's what can we actually get done. We don't want to set the expectation <coughs> where we, we can't achieve that. So if it's okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll get back to the council on that. Sounds good. 
Well, let me ask a question. I don't want to open up a can of worms, but uh, I believe that um, finance department changed our municipal code a couple of years ago. Will this budget come before us as an ordinance? Um, it, yes. And technically, I think the council has the authority now to change an ordinance the night of the vote. Just to clarify that. So there's a very compelling reason next Monday, which I assume we're going to vote on this next Monday. That's our hope. That's the plan. Yep. If there's a compelling reason to make a change, it can be made then. Are you suggesting to bring back your discussions with the chief and bring it back and then at the time Alderman Bram can make a motion if he wants to? Is that what you're? Yes. Proposing a very short way that I just drew out forever. Okay, so Alderman Bram, you're okay with that. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments, Alderman York? Just to follow, so it was Alderman Bram's uh, suggestion to add money to the budget for more license plate readers. That's what we're going to hear about. Whether it's feasible, <laughs> that is potentially it. He okay. wants to Thank accelerate you. the purchase. Right now, it's split into two years, half million dollar total. And okay, well. Uh, Question. Well, it wasn't a motion, it was just a discussion. But yeah. <laughs> clarified, yes? Yes. All right. I'm good. Alderman York. Uh, Alderman Levin. All right. Maybe I misread. I thought the <coughs> suggestion was to move the money into the current fiscal year. Did you mean you were yeah. thinking about moving 2019 into 2018? He wants to, instead of taking two years to install, he wants to buy it all in one year. Which I think what Alderman Levin just said is the same thing, if I'm think understanding. So. The current fiscal year is 2017, so obviously. No, well, 2018 and 2019, 2018, he wants to combine them in 2018. 2018, all right. In theory, no motion has been made at this point. <laughs> no, we're just, in this is all theory. Okay. Any additional comments or questions as it relates to the circle back or the budget at this time? <laughs> I know everyone Alderman wants Plumsky. to one more point. It will be quick. <laughs> I'm not going to ask to do anything with it, just questions about it. Um, the Public Affairs and Safety Committee has been looking at the underpass sign. What page? Do you know? What That's my question. I don't know <coughs> what it is. Remember, at one point it was closer to 230, but then uh, where can I find it in the budget? In our discussion in February, the proposal was two signs up to $155,000 each, so 310000 is a high point. The magic keb? <coughs> Um, no. The sign right IT? now is budgeted in IT. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, so page, page 117 and 18. What page, what? Jim? Page, page 117 and 118. Thank you. I think it's 8098. 8098, that's correct. And it's it's in the current fiscal year at, at the, under the 385,000. 8098, um, got it. So is that the actual spent on 209,000 or two, about 210 from 2016? What else is included in the budget line, I guess, is my question, and how much is allocated for the sign? So 8095. So on page one, for council, we're on page 118, uh, last line item 8098. The 385? Well, yeah, well, I remember, Polomsky's asking for a little bit of history because we had actual spend in 15 and 16 of over 200,000. I think the arrest is the OIP. Pardon? Go ahead. I'm sorry, Alderman, I didn't hear what you said. I thought it was the VOI, the, vo the voice over internet, wasn't that part of this line? If, yeah, if you look Correct. at page 109 in the Keb. The uh, very last page of the budget book. Th there's a, a breakdown of those IT projects. So under 17, under miscellaneous, the 385, that all those in there? Correct. And it's part of the $205,000 for audio video equipment. 155 of that is for the store, the sign, and 50,000 is for equipment here in, in the city council chambers. Okay, so there's money allocated for the sign. Um, we don't know where that will come out of committee but it's not it doesn't look like it's it's listed to carry over staff's intent that we would carry it over we would propose to carry it over okay so the question is of the 385 that are there how much would carry over you estimate 
at least the 150, if not. Um, 155. Yeah. So, so the 205 is probably the carryover. So those two items that I mentioned, the, the equipment for city council chambers and then the electronic <coughs> sign. Okay. So staff would be proposing a carryover of $205,000 for that line item. <coughs> okay. Uh, Polomsky, does that make sense? Okay, it does, although I, I'm sorry, that 85 existing covers what? Go ahead. That's, uh, that's the next line item on uh, the, the cab, the next column, 2018. Page 109. I put mine in the front. Okay. So, um, but my question also was the last time we brought up the budget, and it was in February. There were the proposal was, and maybe Kent can answer this: two signs, um, one for each side of the underpass. It'd be 155 each. I'm, I'm not advocating for the sign. I'm just want to see where this is. I believe that was total for the two signs. <laughs> yeah. The 150. Okay. Oh, that flies over here now. Um, actually, have this report right here. Is that bad? Oh. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so it sounds like of the 385, 205 will carry over <clears throat> approximately 55,000 for new equipment here in this room and 150,000 potentially for a sign that is still at committee. 55 and 50. Close. Okay. Any other conversation uh, questions or comments on this budget? All right, so city manager, it is the intent, a little housekeeping. As I've noted before, we're required by law to pass a budget. <clears throat> so is the state. That's the state who doesn't pass their own budget. Oh, the irony. It's their law. It's the law, they must. Um, so December 4th, that's uh, next Monday. Uh, this budget will be on the agenda, correct? Council's aware. Yes. Correct, and we're also required to hold a public hearing, which is scheduled for that night. Do we hold it in the middle of the meeting, or do we do it before? In the middle of the beginning meeting. of the meeting is when beginning, we've done oh, we it. do like two public forums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Meeting within a meeting. Any other comments or questions? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Alderman Mulliner, second by Alderman Toledo. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. We're adjourned. Yeah. Thank you, everybody.